couldn't quite uh, put that thing away to maybe enjoy it and uh, maybe even relax the last six or eight minutes. But um, I tell you what, it was a, it was a battle and it was a fight. Uh, we had a bunch of ups and downs. You know that second quarter uh, and even later in the, the third quarter. You know the defense on the field a long time, and uh, that's what you you start to feel the the energy, the complimentary football that we really talk about. Uh, last week the offense really picked up the defense. I'm just talking in the first quarter when you know, they went straight down the field and scored, and then the offense comes out and just manhandles them down the field, gives them some time to rest and relax. Uh, and it kind of switched a little bit today. You know, in, in a situation where the offense started struggling a little bit, they're pounding, they're loading the box, uh, defense time after time after time, fourth down stops, come back out there, playing a lot of snaps. That uh, that front seven has uh, really, really, really kind of matured. And, and done a great job. But we'll go with questions. <laughs> How big was that, that punt block? Just First time in what, 10 years, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Haven't had a punt block in 10 years. Uh, it's just, it, it's amazing. We, we uh, Coach Mason showed our special teams a couple clips on Friday, and it was uh, basically six punt blocks from other teams, and it was nothing scheme oriented. And what we're trying to say is we don't draw up something every single time that's perfect. The guy's going to come free, put his hand on the ball, and it's going to be something special. It's about strain. It's about guys believing and just going harder than the other guy. Uh, we were in a punt return, and we have two guys that are going hard to, to at least force the kick. And uh, Ethan Tucky did exactly what we saw on film on Friday, uh, made points of it about the strain and the effort, uh, and he did that. He outstrained those other guys, put his hand on the football. He told me after the game it was the greatest feeling he's ever had. Clint Lewis appeared to be more of a factor in the red zone game today. Can you attest to that? Yeah, you know, Khalil was he had a he had a little bit of a tough week uh, because of last week and, and he had two drops. And Khalil's really, really hard on himself. Uh, we tried to get him back out of a funk on Tuesday and on Wednesday and you know, just because he's he's he wants to be so good. Uh, and he just has a hard time sometimes when, when you know last week in a game, I know people probably don't even remember it, but he dropped, you know, uh, two touchdown passes that he believes he should have caught. And, you know, Khalil should catch him. And then he came out today, and you know, we kind of got him back. Coach Joker did a great job just mentally with him, making sure we continue to push him. He came back out today, was a factor in the red zone. Probably would have been a bigger factor had to, you know, you not been up by you know, 16, 17 points where you're going to keep kind of taking some of those shots because that's what they're making you do. Um, but I think that uh, all in all, you know, we, had, we ended up in the third quarter and the fourth quarter doing what we had to do uh, to finish the football game. Been a handful of times this season where you guys have either bounced back from slow starts or injuries or something like that in the first half or after halftime. Is there something you're doing as coaches to address that immediately, or is it just kind of the accumulation of practices and the second? Year? I just think the guys are getting more comfortable. They understand uh, when they know what and why. You can come to the sideline and make little just adjustments here and there. Uh, you got a relationship enough with them that you know it's not a, a tough situation when you're trying to coach them, even when you're being hard on them during a the game. Um, they're, they're, they're growing to be able to take coaching. And in order to be a great player, in order to take yourself to the next level, you have to be able to take coaching. You have to be able to adjust, you have to be able to adapt, and you've got to be able to communicate. And I mean that in a game situation when the heat is on. And I think that's where, as you really step back and look what the difference is from even from this year and last year, it's relationships, it's the ability for guys to take good, hard coaching and make adjustments, especially in games. A lot of bodies on defense, was that because of the weather and the temperature one and two, how impressed were you that it didn't seem like there was much drop off when you did cycle guys through? You, you really, that's when you're starting to create those healthy competitions in those rooms. You know, we've always tried to do it up front defensive line wise, but uh, you saw it a lot more in the linebacker today. You know, you saw Joel DeBlanco and you saw uh, Jarrell White in there, you saw RJ Potts in there, you saw a lot of those guys in there in crucial situations. Um, and what it does is it still builds those that brother, it builds those relationships to know that you trust them. You know, we, we have a guy in there probably on, on the one touchdown. I don't know exactly what happened, but you know, his ability to hey, react, go ahead, move back out, and we put him back in the football game, knowing that we we, we trust him. Um, that goes a long way inside that locker room. I know you don't want overconfidence, but just how confident is this group right now? Since now? You know, I mean, it, it's. <laughs> It's something that you see when we take the practice field, you know, and it's just, it's a little bit of that bounce, a little bit of that joy to what it is that they do. Um, you know, everybody loves it when you're winning, but I just, you just see a different vibe uh, from the positive, but just in the locker room. You can go in that locker room and you, know, you go in there last year, everybody's got their headsets on and they're, they're just kind of doing their own little thing. And now all of a sudden you go in the locker room and you know, half hour, 45 minutes before practice and you got guys holding courts, you got guys dancing, you got, I mean, they just, you can just tell there's, 
there's a better energy about it. They are enjoying what it is that they do. Um, and I try to tell them, it's not, I just don't want you to enjoy the success and the euphoria of winning. I want you to enjoy the guys that are around you and what you're doing in order to get yourself there. And I think they're, they're seeing it and, they're, and they're, they're getting a lot of energy from that. On defense today, how much was a tackling in space a key going into the game for the defense? No, I mean, two weeks ago, uh, we didn't do a great job of it. Uh, we addressed it. We came out actually the second half of that you know, OU game and, and did a lot better job. Uh, we'll continue to do a better job. That you know, there's there's a balance between being aggressive and being too passive and worried about missing shot, tackles and shots. Um, and I think that's where I'm happiest with Coach Freeman and those guys over there. That you know, they're building the confidence in those guys to be aggressive, to take the shots, um, take the shots with good leverage, and, and trust and believe that you got a bunch of other guys that are coming your way. You are already uh, bowl eligible now with six wins. Um, are you allowed to talk about that? <laughs> you know, what would you like to say? Of course, every, I mean, that's, that's something that's in the back of your mind. I, I, never, I didn't even bring it up to the guys in there. Um, I don't want any type of satisfaction. We never talked about it before the season. We never set a goal to say, hey, we want to get to this point where we can play um, later in the year. Uh, it, it's, it's that mentality of, hey, let's just continue to do Let's continue to enjoy what it is that we're doing. Don't want anything to slow us down and, and to you know to have be a distraction. So you know I can't say that at some point in time the elephant in the room doesn't need to be addressed with these guys in a bye week. Um, I know that that's something that not only that they'll know or their parents might say something to them, um, but I also want them to stay hungry and I want them to not be satisfied. And that's why we didn't put limitations on us uh, from the beginning of the year. How do you how do you manage that going into a bye week? Uh, the balance of letting them have a chance to enjoy what they've accomplished at this point, but also staying focused? Well, it's, it's a good thing to try to balance because we didn't have to have to have worry about that last year. Um, but you know what? I, that's where I think that you're most excited about what you kind of are starting to build inside the locker room so guys will take care of it more themselves. You know, you, you've talked about that hunger that fuels inside you when you have some success as opposed to the complacency that can fuel inside you. So, um, you know, I told him, hey, we're going we're gonna to sell, we're going to enjoy this. We're going to be smart. We're going to enjoy this. And then we're going to keep this train rolling, and I think that's the that's the unique thing. Is at some point in time you say, well, you're on a roll. You don't you don't want to buy a week? Um, you don't get to choose, pick and choose those things. We're, we're going to use it in the best way possible. Uh, we'll get healthy, but we'll continue to work um, to make sure we're ready for, for for Temple in two weeks. Does it come at a good spot though? Halfway through the season, maybe some guys are, are banged up a little bit. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, you, you can look at it. it. It comes at a really good time as long as we use it the right way, and and I I believe we will. You know, we got some guys that got dinged up a little bit. The, the weather was unseasonably probably hot today. We had some guys that cramped up Wiggins late in the game um, and things like that. But we'll be smart. Um, but, but there's a lot of things we know that we had a plan before the year. Okay, had a plan in place before the year of what we would do on a bye week. That way you don't flip out and change everything you do, whether you're 0-6 or 6-0. and You know, you want to be consistent. You want to have some type of plan going in place. Um, and then not let the emotion of uh, wherever you are during a season affect you in a, in, in a bad way. So we'll stick with our plan, and uh, it'll, be a little bit, it'll be a little bit livelier, it'll be a little bit more energy, and it'll be a, a bit funner. What does it mean for the, the team and for Campbell to have him out there with the captain before the game? It's big. I mean, he asked me if he could. I said, I would be disappointed if you couldn't. Um, you know, th th those guys know what, what he sacrificed to, to – to be where he is, to be back here for a sixth year, and, and the other things that have even going on in his life. And uh, they know that, they respect that, uh, and, and I believe that's, that might be a little something that gave us a little edge when, when we got tired today. You might have to kind of get a good look at the film to, to fairly address this, but how do you think Jakari did? He did a good job. I mean, there, there's a bad snap, there's a little bit of a flinch of the football I think we had twice there on third and a half a yard to end the game. Um, but all in all, I mean, that's a tough situation. You know, it's not like you, you know, it's, it's in the midst of a, of a run and there's a lot of energy, a lot of momentum. Uh, you take it over for a guy who's the captain of the team and probably the heartbeat of, uh, I don't want to say the offense or the team, but for sure that offensive line. Uh, those are big shoes I and mean, that's a lot of pressure and, and I'm happy. I, I'm, I'm really proud of what he's done and uh, I know he's going to get a lot better. Is there any update on Michael Warren? Um, I think he rushed for like 100 and some yards. And, <laughs> Had the second longest or third Standard. longest, yeah. third longest run in, in third school longest history, longest and history. I'm not sure he knew he could go that long. So uh, I don't know. You can ask him. <laughs> Jeff, get him oxygen afterwards. <laughs>
It's a good thing to have. It's a good problem to have. Yeah, good. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.